Hello everybody, good day to you. Hope it's a very pleasant day. Uh, Anand here. Today we're going to take up a very interesting topic which I had promised uh, when we were doing differentiation. We're going to take up the second part of differentiation, that is integration. <clears throat> uh, rather the second part of calculus, that is integration. Of course, calculus is a very wide subject, but two major parts are differentiation integration. We've already done quite a lot on differentiation and I'm sure you must have uh, familiarized yourself with the topic by now. Now we're going to take up integration. Now we often come across the word integration in so many ways. We talk about national integration. For example, what do you mean by national integration? The entire nation, you break it up into tinier, tinier, tiniest bits that each person, each member of the population and then you integrate each of these tinier ones and then you talk about the concept of national integration. Much quite like that, we have the concept of integration. When we are talking about differentiation, I give you the example of how you break up a journey into tiny, tiny bits and in each of those tiny bits, you find the distance covered in the smallest possible time intervals. Picture this. Let's take an example. You are talking about the performance of a particular student in a particular year. So you say, uh, let's de denote it, suppose there is a kind of a curve that represents his performance over the period, over a particular period. This is suppose the period which is along the x-axis and this is possibly the scores that he has been getting. All right. So, he, his graph has been like this. Now, you want to get a net idea of how his performance has been. So, what you do, you want to see what is the net effect of his performance. So, you break it up into tiny, tiny intervals. So, you suppose there are two tests. You break it up into four tests. In each of the four tests, what does he score? It's, you get a better estimate as compared to his judgment based on just two exams. Then you make it maybe five exams, then seven exams, eight exams. So the law of averages kind of works. So you break it up into greater number of exams. You go to the extent of having tests on a daily basis. And on the basis of that, you break it up into tiny, tiny performances like these. So in each of these performances, what his score has been is what you evaluate. Yes. And Yes, and hence you get, break it up into tiny, tiny, tiny rectangles like this and hence that gives you an idea, a better idea of his performance during the entire period. Now suppose you break it up into tinier intervals, so you get it like this daily, daily basis, you find tinier intervals and you find that you get a closer estimate of his performance and then you you take an integral value of all these that is you sum up the effect of each of these particular exams yes and for example in the first exam you get 60 marks in the second exam you get 70 marks third exam you get 80 marks fine you are getting better and better but on a daily basis maybe even one hour every hour you give him a test and you get 60 marks 70 marks 80 marks 90 marks 20 marks all those things and then when you do these kind of tests, assume of course the human mind responds in the ideal way, you will be able to find that you're breaking up the entire performance of this particular student into tinier, tinier periods and you're observing his performance and then you sum up all the performances in each of the tinier period, you get a better estimate of what that particular student is going to give. Or let's take another example. Suppose you have a similar kind of a curve. You could have a curve like this. And I want to find the area under this curve. This of course is the domain and this is the range of course. So now this is not a regular figure. If it is a square or a rectangle, well, fine, you have standard formula to find the area of a rectangle. But here you need to break it up. So maybe you could break it up into these kind of small, 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 small rectangles, smaller rectangles, yes, and you find the area of these rectangles. So roughly you add up all these areas which is integration, 
this area plus this plus this plus this so you're adding up this area this area this area all these areas roughly that is equal to the area of the curve but still these the small small areas have been left unaccounted for so how can you make the approximation smaller further break this up into rectangles further break this up further break this up further break these up into rectangles and you will find that still less space is left unaccounted for when you break this up into tiny rectangles so you are reducing the value of the time interval that is in general you are reducing delta x smaller and smaller delta x is when you take you will find that more area under the curve in between the rectangle gets covered in the rectangle so you have more area getting covered like this so as you make the interval smaller and smaller in the x values you find that the area under the curve becomes closer to the actual value and then you add up the area of all these rectangles that will give you the area of the area under the curve now the same concept is what basically integration is all about so in a nutshell integration is if you have a particular space and area or a particular function break it up into the smallest possible time intervals of the variable that is x <clears throat> and then find the value of that sum up all those values and that will give you the integral value of the whole function this is the concept of integration and another very important thing what exactly is integration it is the reciprocal of differentiation or rather it is a reverse of differentiation say for example suppose d by dx of say f of x is some function say g of x this means the integral of g of x is nothing but f of x now how do we write it symbolically this a big special s elongated one we write it as g of x dx is f of x now to make myself more clear let's take an example we know that d by dx that is the derivative of log x is 1 by x so in that case now this is f of x this is g of x so integral of 1 by x is nothing but log x this is how we write it so hence these two are reciprocals of each other so if uh, a function say m is the derivative of y then the integral of m is nothing but y so this is basically what is the concept of uh, the reciprocal of integration which is nothing but uh, the reverse of differentiation so these are certain symbols and all associated with the concept of integration we'll be taking up some basic formula in that and then we'll work upon examples based on this